minutes. So thanks again, Corey. Can we get Corey in this call? <laughs> and then Corey would be in the house. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's enough streaming for one night, guys. Uh, it's been fun. I'll I'll start again tomorrow. <laughs> no, I just got on here. <laughs> you can't do this to me. <laughs> Corey in the house. <laughs> so, uh, somebody asked when the next when the uh, the Bubsy retrospective is. Um, after the Corey in the house one. <laughs> <laughs> It's coming well, up right Sonic after that. Sonic 1325 donated a penny. What's that? Sonic 1325 donated a penny, he says. That is that is fantastic. Thank you. Ready, set, go. <laughs> oh, I think I missed the Chaos Emerald. <laughs> I think I ran right by the Chaos Emerald a minute. <laughs> You'll see it in a second. You can get it on the next lap, right? Yeah, yeah. You can get them on any lap, if I remember correctly. Yeah, yeah, it's a... I remember once being able to get all of the Chaos Emeralds and all of the coin things. Like, in a single run-through, I played this so much, which is... Oh god, you did play this a lot, then. It's... Mm. I, I've... I, embarrassed. I, I can do all the Chaos Emeralds most of the time, but I, I don't think I've ever done all the coins at the same time. I am on on Chocolate's. Oh no, I'm thinking I'm thinking of Sonic Colors there. But can you feel the sunshine level? I'm just going to call it that now. <laughs> um, I, I have I have done I've done the the coins and the chaos emeralds in the same in the same in the same turn. I had to do it three times because I kept getting third the first two and then finally got first by by pure coincidence in the third the third attempt. All right. That was using using a broken PS1 controller. It's not going to be exactly easy to beat Knuckles here, but I'll try. To, that is to beat Knuckles and get the Emerald, because this Emerald's kind of, uh... Out the way. Kind of difficult to get. I feel so bad for not hardly knowing this game at all. <laughs> Why is that? I mean, I've, still got, I've still got up in my room my... the, the, orig the original, um, PC release. by Explosive. I know it's probably I remember not the original. That. But it's... It, unfortunately, it's scratched to all hell and I can't play it. I have a copy of this game on PC, but it's worthless because it was a budget re-release, and all of the CD audio tracks are missing. How could they forget oh, that? I don't know. Uh, I mean, I didn't have any trouble with the other games that came in the same four-pack. Alright, guys, I've got some really bad news. Um, SKM Pow JY is Corey. He, he says that he lives in an apartment and not a house. So, oh, Corey in the apartment just doesn't have the same ring to it. It was the backbone of the whole show. <laughs> yep. You know, now, now we just know now it'll be the sweet life of Corey. If anybody watched that? Oh gosh. Oh. <laughs> That's an era of the Disney Channel I try to forget. I mean, I'll admit, I, I did watch it a little bit, but I, I like that Sweet Life on Deck a lot more. Don't know why. And then I just forgot about it and never watched it again. Definitive Dubs wants to know what Knuckles is even doing in that results screen, and I feel he brings up an excellent point. Yeah. He's, like, marking yeah, in some, place. For some reason in this game, Knuckles has got, this, got the same shoe design as Tails. Yeah. Copy and paste thing. <laughs> I'm sure. No, it wasn't that way in the PC version, was it? No. Um, I swear it was different in the PC version. I just noticed it here that he's got the. Yeah. Yeah, I just noticed that in the beginning there. I think the Saturn must have, quote, like, substantially worse graphics. Which is weird because Sonic 3D had be better graphics on the Saturn. And yeah, that's yeah. the nerdiest sentence I've ever said. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the, well Sonic... the Saturn version also came out, like, I think about a year before the PC version did. So, so they had a lot of extra time to work on it. Well, and uh, the Saturn's not a moving target, and the PC is. So, uh, a, a game that comes out on the Saturn uh, one year, and the PC... Oh, I'm, my sense is falling apart. I understand what you're saying, though. <laughs> yeah, I will you, say that um, Saturn actually is a moving target. It, like, orbits the sun. <laughs> Really quickly. <laughs> yeah, when you started saying that, Gover, I didn't know if you were if you were going for a joke or not. 
<laughs> Sorry, I went for the. Nah, my time. jokes don't have that much setup. As long as, long as Saturn isn't the end, isn't the end of everything. <laughs> no, that'd be the Dreamcast. <laughs> I was trying to make a Sailor Moon reference. All right, Jesus Christ. Bring it back to Sailor seen. Moon. Cover, you said you've been watching Sailor Moon R. Are, are you talking about, uh, like, Crystal R? Because I know Chris... No, 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 no. I haven't been keeping um, up with Crystal, but I know it's in the R section now. <laughs> in the R section. They, um, <laughs> they're putting uh, both Crystal and the original show on Hulu. Uh, Crystal, I think, one episode every two weeks, and Sailor Moon, two episodes a week. And I've been watching the original uh, subtitled. And it's very, very different than it uh, originally was when it was dubbed in the U.S. Yeah, yeah, uh, I, last I, time I, I heard about that. Like, he still called Usagi. Well, not, not even just that, because um, I'm not watching the dubs, I'm watching the subs. Oh, okay. Um, but, uh, for example, um, Sailor Uranus and Sailor Neptune. In the original mm -hmm. U.S. dub, they were cousins. In the Japanese and in the new updated one, they're actually uh, lovers. Right, right. Oh Great yeah, because wasn't yeah, yeah there was censor there was censorship about that, wasn't there? Uh, catching yeah. up with the chat know, here, real quick. So I'm not to like, <laughs> but before it scrolls off screen, I want to hit some things here. Uh, Taco Smash yeah. says Taxman should remake Sonic R and fix it. Uh, yes. Fix <laughs> what exactly is my question? But, I, I don't I don't see a problem with any of this. Um, a little more fluent control. Why, these suck. <laughs> A little more fluent, fluent control, and I think maybe like um, one or two more courses. No, not too, not too much taxing, shall we say? Ah, <laughs> uh, I get it. No, I think, I think maybe you add one more course. If you, if if you overstuff yeah. Sonic R with levels, then you're, you're you're just missing the point of it. I'm going to ask you the question, which box arts do you think look better, the PAL or American versions of the Sonic games? Um, I guess be more specific than that, because <laughs> I, I, it like, depends well, which game. Specifically, like, the Mega Drive, Mega Drive and Genesis games, which, which, which box arts do you prefer? Because I know um, Sonic 1 and one, 1 and 3 had different box arts here than they did in America, right, and right. CD as well. I definitely like the, just... if, I, if, it, if it is what I'm thinking it is, I definitely like the European uh, Sonic CD box are better. Yeah. Um, is that, is, are you thinking the one where it's the close-up of Sonic, Sonic and um, Metal Sonic? That's, that's the, that's the PAL version. Yeah, yeah, and then it has that, I, I, I don't know if the European version has it, but I know the Japanese version has that quote about, like, the first thing you must do to live a life of power is to become, is to take that first step or something like that. Um, it's from what I remember, it's not on there, but but it's just like it's just it's the, they've got the same art as the Japanese one, but they've made it close in, so it looks like Sonic and Sonic and Metal Sonic are ready to fight, ready to battle each other out. Yeah, like like fisticuffs. <laughs> I think I really prefer the Sonic Three PAL version personally because yes. I think it's a bit more dynamic. Yeah, with um, which I've actually got my. Mega Sonic 3 Mega Drive box with me the, with Knuckles and in, in Carnival Nights and Sonic with the yeah so Sonic the, holding up the three fingers finger. yeah well I, okay I guess he's doing that on the US box art too come to think of it <laughs> yeah but <laughs> well, it's, it's, actually... it's in a weirder kind of way because he's he's got the first three like the thumb and the first two fingers and he's got the other two down <laughs> that's how he does it in the PAL box art. But then he's also got uh, his his index finger on his other hand up, so yeah. he's actually counting to four. <laughs> Sonic four confirmed before Sonic four was confirmed. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm gonna beat Knuckles this time. Oh nope, I am. Good stuff. Nice. You know, yeah. watching watching you play this game, I was realizing it reminds me a lot of Diddy Kong Racing. Diddy Kong Racing. That's funny because um, I, not I got both of those games on the same day. Not in terms of like the controls or the level design or the mechanics, but specifically the uh, Emerald Collection. It's yeah. the way they're hidden reminds me a lot of the way stuff is hidden everywhere in Diddy Kong Racing. Yeah, I can see that. 
No, I, I always remember because I got a Saturn that same day. It was uh, like Christmas 1997. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the way, that does unlock Supersonic. Always thought that was awesome. When I first played this game, I was like, man, I'd rented Diddy Kong Racing a couple times. It was my first time ever playing a Saturn. I was so excited about it. But I was like, Sonic R, God, this blows Diddy Kong Racing out of the water. This is so good. <laughs> <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. <laughs> All right, here you we go. Kid. kid logic means whatever you want to be true is true. Ready, set, go. I loved being kid when you didn't have to substantiate opinions or pay taxes. So are we all going to sing Supersonic Racing or not? We can try. Oh, the lyrics say everybody. <laughs> everybody. Everybody. Run away. <laughs> you don't have, you don't to, have stay. to stay. We're running out of time. We're out of time. time. But you're doing but you're fine. Doing you're doing fine. fine. So stay on track. So stay on track. And don't look and back. Don't, don't look back. Just feel the pace. Just feel the pace. Come on Come now, on race. now race. race! Everybody super Everybody sonic super racing. Sonic Ready racing. to keep your feet right Ready on the ground. Right on the ground. When you're super it's sonic, super sonic racing. racing. There's no time to no look time around. To look around. Right. When you're super sonic super racing, sonic you run into the point, of, to no the point of no return. Everybody super Everybody sonic, super racing. sonic Come racing. Come on, let your body burn. Everybody. Oh, the God. No, the fire's burning. Shit, shit, no. <laughs> I had to look up the lyrics. Everybody. <laughs> I've listened to Sonic, Super Sonic Racing so many times that I, I, I should know them off by heart. I, uh, here's the, the irony of the song is that it says got to keep your feet right on the ground. Also, it's 11 o'clock here, I should probably stop singing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm going to wake somebody up. Um, the irony it's, of it is it says you've got to keep your feet right on the ground, but Supersonic floats. Right, right. And right. I think that is the most ostentatious continuity error in the Sonic series. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's probably probably really more more referring to the other other folk that isn't like just well Sonic and. Well, but the others just, aren't Supersonic Racing. Yeah. O only Supersonic by the other is Supersonic Racing. The like, lyrics for the other characters might as well just be just, just give up. Like like it, it, <laughs> like like if I ran, I wouldn't it's be like Shay no racing. Give up. I would still be myself. Pardon. I was quoting the bot the robotic from Sonic from Sonic Adventure. It's no use. Give up. <laughs> All systems full power. <laughs> Inflate himself <laughs> just like a balloon. This crazy <laughs> Kong just digs this tune. Ha! Huh. DK. <laughs> Why are we singing a DK, Raph? I don't know. I don't... Somebody was singing into the chat. Oh, uh, Dustin VG Master. Super Fighting Robot! <laughs> Mega Kong Man! Kitty Kong. So how about that Lion Man episode of the Mega Man series? <laughs> I mean, series. Uh. My, my favourite bit in the Mega Man series is um, <laughs> Mega Man being a cocky little shit and grabbing Pharaoh Man and going, now I've got your power, and then just getting dead. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we... So, uh, what's our total at? Have, have you gotten any donations uh, during Sonic R? Um, for some reason, no. I don't... I don't know... Well, besides the ones where I said that I... I play through it again and get the emeralds, but aside aside from that, apparently our singing just just isn't worth anything to people or something. Hmm. I, I'm, 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 I am very confused about that. It's my fault, because I didn't know the songs. Ah, oh, man, come on. Practice! I need, I need to now do a cover of the Puyo Puyo song from Puyo Puyo 7. <laughs> I didn't know there was such a thing. How was I um, supposed to learn these songs, though? I didn't have music in my copy, remember? The, the, the lyrics are the, are the simplest you can ever get. All it is is just Puyo Puyo to the to the, to the the song fit. And it's sing, sung by um, Ringo Andu, which the, her voice actor, for, which is the protagonist of Seven, technically 20th, and Tetris. Uh, Pokemologist wants I, to know I, if I'm ever going to do a retrospective on the Crash series. I always like questions like this because it's like, y you guys know I plan to do this for like the next like 50 to 60 years, so I I've got plenty of time. 
<laughs> so yeah, at some point, I'm sure I'll do a retrospective on the Crash series. But the longer you wait, the more Crash games you have to play. And that means the more crappy Crash games you have to play, because let's face it, the series has been kind of garbage for a long time. <laughs> Insanity was the last was the last great Crash game, I'll leave it at that. What, what was? Um, um, Crash to Insanity, mm. you know, for the PS2, Xbox, all the same. I never played anything class Crash 3, to be honest. Although I played a demo of, like, that new style Crash once. Was Twin Sanity the one where you, uh, you, you played as both, like, Crash and Neo Cortex? Yes. It's hilarious, that game. <laughs> <laughs> Nick wants to know if I'm ever going to do a retrospective on the Splatoon franchise. And, and yeah, of course. Splatoon 1, Splatoon 2, um, Splatoon Twin Sanity. Listen, just, just give it two years and Nintendo will have you covered. <laughs> yeah. If it... Does anybody want to see my actual thoughts on Puyo Pop Fever? Because I've got a video here that I could link. Well, oh, hang on just I've a second. Got, I, I just realized the reason we haven't gotten any donations, we forgot to sing this song. All right, let's go. When the day is done and the race is and won. And the race is won. My life has only just begun. <laughs> Nobody? Okay. You know, I've actually on my channel, Paper Mario TTYD Fan 1, I've done every single Puyo Puyo game up to 15. Um, Sig, um, one of the characters in the games, um, his part 1. And um, I've got a co-commentator cool escape with British with me for most of them. Well, since Yon... Whoa, 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 hang on, Matt Jonas? Jonas? Yes. Okay, that is bizarre. <laughs> uh -huh. yeah. That's weird. Because I, I, I do, I, I've worked to, um, with Matt Jonas on um, gaming in the major years. Yeah. Well, that's weird. <laughs> oh, I just, I, the funny thing is that I just, I just, I just said to him on one of his videos, it was like when he was doing Dr. Robotnik's Mean Bean Machine, which would be nice to sh see this on here, but I don't want to tax you, tax you with all the other Sonic games you're doing. Um, he, uh, I just said to him uh, randomly about you know I'm doing Puyo Four. Do you want to play, Do you want to help me with it? And he said yes to it. And it turns out Yon is his favourite game in the series, and I can see why. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, I think my favourite game in the series is Mean Bean Machine, just because of the base. <laughs> just because of the base. Yeah, just be, just be, just because of that that funky Genesis base. Yeah, yeah. Doom, do, 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 do. So, Fanged Sniper asks if you're going to do a legit retrospective on Kirby. No, never Kirby. Never going to touch Kirby. Screw that guy. Hi. I would think that you can't do that without Kalen, right? <laughs> uh, no, I, I could definitely do Kirby at some point. I do love the, the anniversary collection on the Wii. Like, I always point to that, like, why doesn't Nintendo do more of their, like, anniversary collections like this? This is, this is how you do it right. You mean Did instead you of just re-releasing Mario All Stars with a ROM and calling it a day? Yeah, seriously. Did um, Did the UK ever get Dream Collection? Or did it miss us out? Uh, what's that? Um, I don't think Dream Collection ever made it to the UK. I think I'm not sure. Maybe it didn't. Hang on, give it a second. Also, Heidi Shush. My dog's shouting. Ah. No, it didn't make it to the UK. Now I'm gonna go ahead. Him. Here's the here's the Sonic Three bonus goal. If we hit 25 during Sonic Three, I will play Sonic Three again and again. Like the way this is gonna work is as long as we get, as long as we hit 25 dollars during any particular Sonic Three playthrough, I have to keep playing it. So we could potentially be here for a very long time. Here's, here's something for the for the viewers, the viewers to do. Five, um, donate five dollars, and I will read I will read the descriptions of each of the zones out of the manual, <laughs> which I've got in my hand. <laughs> what, what, what a treat! And I, will, and I will, and I will see every single enemy that appears in that zone as well, because why not? Uh, you can also go to audible.com and download tons of free audiobooks. I don't know if you guys listen to podcasts, but like Audible sponsors That's every single lot. podcast. So what are you doing? They're not sponsoring you. No, they're not. <laughs> <sighs> All right. Will you be switching up the characters for Sonic Three? 
What's that? For each subsequent playthrough. Or is it just Sonic? It's just going to be Sonic repeatedly, but I will change the settings in Sonic 3 Complete. Just to get, like, different music and stuff. Ah. I do try to avoid non-Sonic I mean, characters as much as possible in these things. Listen, any excuse to play Sonic is just... <laughs> Sonic 3 is just, you know, it's okay with me. <coughs> uh, I still need to get Son um, Sonic and Knuckles from a Mega Drive. I still need to get a Genesis. <laughs> Never owned one. Did you, but did you, well? Did you ever own a, own a Mega Drive? No, I'm American. <laughs> and by the way, the just uh, I don't know if Ben Woodring is still in here, but me and him had a race through Sonic Three just about two two months ago or so. So to do mm -hmm. to be different to to play something different, I'm going to make at least this first playthrough. Uh, like, I'm gonna use all the Super Emeralds, and I'm gonna use Hypersonic and do that stuff. Oh, yeah. Just so it's not the same thing that I did very recently. See, I've never actually played Sonic 3 Complete. Because I've only I seen... have... I don't think I actually have an emulator on my PC. Hmm. Uh, SKM Pouji, this is Emulation Station. It is available on PC. That's what he's using it on now. Although most people who use it run it with like a Raspberry Pi or something like that. Like that, that's, I think that's really what it's meant for, to be like an emulation box. But I just use it because it's, it's, I don't know what's kind of neat. Definitive Dubs asks, thoughts on Michael Jackson in Sonic 3? I get that question. I think I answered that in the, uh, in one of the wrap up videos. Um, basically, the, from the evidence I've seen, I, I think that so, either Jackson himself or somebody connected to Jackson um, almost certainly did work on the music in some way, but I don't know. I like the music. <laughs> what do you guys think? I like I like Sonic 3's music. I love I like Sonic and Knuckles as well. Obviously, well both I should say. I, I, um, I prefer I prefer for, for launch base. I prefer the PC version of it for some reason. <laughs> That is not a pop like that, that. I'm not calling you out or anything. That is not a popular opinion. That's not an opinion I've seen before. Um, I have that opinion, uh, sort of. Mm -hmm. I like the PC tunes, especially launch bass. Yeah. But only with a uh, Mega Drive sound font or uh, converted to chip tunes. I do not like them with the general MIDI chipset on PC. I like, I like the. I think it's the FM synthesizer versions of them. I like them a little better. And the MIDI ones, uh, whichever way around it is, because it's actually the, the only way that I ever got to see Launch Base, Base Zone as a kid was because, well, I was a bit rubbish at Sonic 3 at the time. I could never get past Carnival Night. So well, the only way I could get through Carnival Night was playing Knuckles in Sonic 3 on, on the PC. If I play through, so if I play through Sonic, um, if I play through this game again, uh, this complete version here actually has, like, the, uh, the PC collection tunes done in the Genesis format. Like, so I'll switch the options to that. Uh, wh what I'll say about Launch Base Zone, though, is that, like, while I definitely like the, the original Genesis version of the song better, um, I, I always felt like it kind of worked well as, like, a final level theme. Like, it's very, like, brown, brown, yeah. brown, go, go, go! And coming in the middle of Sonic 3 and Knuckles as it does... Um, I don't know. I guess I'd, I guess I'd say of all the stages, of all the stages that they replaced the music on in the PC version, I think that Sonic, I think that Launch Base Zone fits the best. Yeah, I like Ice, I like, I like Ice Cap's PC version as well. Well, uh, uh, apparently, the... appa apparently, Michael Jackson's died. What? <laughs> Fred Jack says, Fred Reek says that. Uh, did you hear that Michael Jackson's died? That really? Can't be true. He's probably kidding. He's probably just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Holy shit! No, he has. What? He has. Two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> well, two days and six years. <laughs> <laughs> Almost the same amount. <laughs> this thing here is apparently supposed to be the flying battery. Well, no. Remember, Shay is in a different time zone than we are, Kovar. So that's it's probably that's oh, probably different. Oh yeah, that. But... That would do it. <laughs> uh, 
Hard times, happiest days of my life. And speaking hard of hard times, times Dusty Rhodes died recently, too. The American Dream, Dusty speaking Rhodes. I feel like I don't know who that is. He, he was, like, a very famous wrestler, especially in the South, in, like, the 70s and 80s. That's why I don't know who he is. Yeah. <laughs> I really liked him, but I felt it was a bit annoying that you had to use your 4x4 to drive on him. Um, I feel like I should know this reference. <laughs> okay, Dusty Rhodes, okay. Okay, I get it. Yeah. There's it. only one wrestler in ever that I would know by name. Uh, two wrestlers. Uh, Hulk Hogan and uh, um, Lou Albano. That's an interesting combination. Hulk Hogan because he's super famous and Lou Albano because of the Super Mario <laughs> Super Show. Because the Mario Super Show. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Hey, paisanos. <laughs> I don't know. I could probably name every Royal Rumble winner. Um, <laughs> I said in the N64 retrospective that pro wrestling is another thing that I'm a geek about. And I wasn't kidding. So, are you going to do a retrospective of pro wrestling games? That would actually be really fun. Except for the fact that so many of them are really bad on the N64 and PlayStation. No, no, no. The N64 ones were like that. Some people still think that like WWF No Mercy on the N64 is the best there's ever been. Oh, don't get me wrong. The, the best was there, but there was some pretty bad ones, too. <laughs> I just realized I, I've forgotten to go hypersonic in this stage. Oh, oh, yes. Which control setup do you have? You might be able to go anyway, even though you have a shield. Yeah, yeah, I've got the, uh, in Sonic 3 Complete, for anyone who doesn't know, one of the things you can do is, like, you can, uh, even with a shield, you can do a super hyper transformation by holding it, like, hitting a jump button and then hitting another jump button. It's nice. You can also cancel the super that way. See, that's, that's something they really needed, just the cancel button, I think. Um... What I was going to say is, you know what this, that thing, um, if you've seen Sonic Spitball Part 2, there's a bit coming up where I, I compliment Hydro City's music, where it has like the snare drums and the off beats. Right. Mm -hmm. That is something, and this, this is just a minor piece of trivia, but that's something that actually they use so often in the modern Sonic formula. They will do like a lot of off beats really, really quickly on the snare drum to make it sound like, you know, like kind of a, a like a kind of a pitter patter, like he's going fast. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's the end of that. Really. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> who, so who, who out of all of us um, was really scared of this wall when they first played this game? I was. It died. Uh, yeah, it killed me a bunch. You know, I'm, I'm going to disagree with you about the hypersonic cancel being something that Sonic 3 needed. Because I feel like um, that, that was kind of an intentional trade-off. It's like, you... You either wait to go supersonic and risk running out of rings, and also, or you either go supersonic right away and risk oh. running out of rings, or you wait and you risk getting hurt and losing them before you go. It, it's a risk That's reward true. system. That's yeah. true. I didn't, I didn't think of that. Um, the problem, the problem I have definitely is that it's far too easy to activate supersonic by accident. This and is it's, true. Well, and also, it's, it's, it's like yeah. Also, it's like the, the, the Sonic games on the Genesis and on the Genesis were all like, there was only one button that did anything. Like, like, yeah. like they had that yeah, simplicity. They... Yeah. Yeah, like, I, I definitely, like, after you've said that, I definitely wouldn't uh, put, like, a cancel button in there now, because you're, you're absolutely right, that does kind of defeat the whole purpose, but... Yeah, it is good that they've included, like, a, a, a specific command for Sonic 3. Yeah, it's neat to have. It'll, be there, it'll probably, probably be there for people who want, you know, want to use Insta Shield but don't want to activate Supersonic slash Hypersonic at the same time. You know, for those who want to actually go through the level and not be able to completely destroy it. Now, what I definitely really like is that uh, Sonic 3 Complete gives you the option to use, like, the fast zone music, like we're hearing right now, instead of the mm -hmm. Super Hyper music. Yeah, that's because it it, it gets really old hearing over and over and over again. 
Oh, you know, I... Son Sonic 3, the, the Sonic 3 Steam, which is a little better in my opinion. I counted it. I counted it. That's the same note 12 times in a row. <laughs> the um, dedication. Did anybody see? They're consistent about it at least. But yep. um, did anybody see that insurance advert with Sonic in it? Oh uh, yes. Yeah, I remember that. That yeah, was great. Aggressive one, yeah. And it had for some reason like of all this because this was in like 2012 or something. And yeah. of all the songs you could have chosen, they chose the Sonic 3 Invincibility theme. Oh yeah, they it's did. Probably the least unknown invincibility track from the games. Well, see, uh, uh, I'm assuming that it was cheaper to license than any of the music from Sonic 1 or 2. Yes, definitely. Yeah. Sonic 2, I Sonic see D 2. Definitive Dubs wants to know, uh, since he's apparently also a Tennessean, uh, where in Tennessee did I grow up? I grew up in uh, Johnson City. It's uh, the Tri-Cities, Johnson City, Kingsport, Bristol area. Oh yay, we're at my favorite zone. I love Marble Gardens. Love its music. Oh yeah, we, we <laughs> back during Sonic 1, Kovar and I were talking about how he said that, like, he felt like Marble Garden went on too long. And I sort of got I to love the... this zone, but it does go for a long time. I did it's funny, it's, I feel the same way about Marble Garden that I do with Sandopolis. Mm -hmm. Is, they are, they are quite fiddly zones, is my problem with them. I don't think it's necessarily that they're too long, I think it's just like, they're very, very. You have to be careful. Like, yeah, they are quite. They are yeah. quite long, but it's you have to. Be... Sorry, I'll start again. <laughs> I think Carnival Night, for example, is longer, but you don't have to be as careful. Whereas, like this is this and Sandopolis are like extended periods of don't go too fast. Yeah, basically. Yeah, Shane. I know. I know. We've talked about this with uh, with like Games Brain, like like his opinions on Sonic Three. And how, like, because uh -huh. we've been playing this game, like, so long and so much that we're kind of blind to these to these uh, potential problems about it. Like, I, I never think, like, God, this, get, this, this zone is so complicated and, and convoluted. And, well, but, but I do remember looking back, like, compared to Sonic 2, when I was first playing Sonic 3, I was like, this is... This is I, I, I got time overs in, these, in, in the Sonic 3 zones, and I never did that in Sonic 2. I think my response to Games Brain there would be get good, noob. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. This is not no, five minutes at F, boys. <laughs> no, it's um. I see what he's saying, and I definitely like. I absolutely if it would have taken out the, the the time limit, like the time over. Yeah. In in this game, but yeah, I have to admit the only time I ever got a time over in this game was with the battle, and that was once. Same here. I've got, I've, um, I've got, I've had five time overs because of that battle on five different playthroughs. Um, we, the we, barrel we... used to screw me up like all the time. I think I was stuck on that thing for at least like six months. It, it's it's hard to remember uh, since I was so young at the time, but I, I was stuck at that barrel for a long time. Like I beat the game completely as Knuckles be it... before I ever got past that barrel. I Sorry. got past the barrel without knowing how to do it. Because um, I did that thing that everyone tries, which is bouncing on it to make it go up and down. Right. Instead of pressing up and down. I made it work. I pulled that off. And that's how I always beat that uh, before I saw online how to do it correctly. And um, what happened to me is I thought with the barrel, I thought you were supposed to put it down a little bit. But, and then there'd be a little side of, bit off to the side that would let you go on further, I didn't, because um, Tails had, had um, glitched into the wall. I refuse to use button, your police! Go. Sorry, go on. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so, uh, so I thought, so I thought, um, thought where Tails had gone was where I had to go, but no, it was just him glitched into the wall, and I was supposed to go down and got a time over. Well, Tails glitched into the wall makes it easier to do it the wrong way, because uh, you can you can still get extra high and low uh, bouncing as Sonic alone, but if you have Tails with you, he will mess it up. Yeah. yeah. That, that was my problem back then, too, is that I always played with uh, Sonic and Tails. And now I now I'm, I like, never I... have Tails. <laughs> yeah, same here. I, like, I, I just... I got stuck in it once, and then the next time I played it through, I kind of sussed it out. I don't think I googled it. I could have done, though. 
we go we go um well me and my parents we googled we googled how to how to how to how to, how to um how to get past the barrel. We we but we tried it before but we kept looking up Sonic Mega Collection Plus because that's where I first played Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And that's that's that, that's that's what we did. We googled it up up for Sonic Mega Collection Plus, not Sonic 3 specifically. And oh then god, I feel so maybe... old. <laughs> if if Mega Collection <laughs> maybe... Plus is the first place you played Sonic 3, then you played it at least ten years after I did. Sorry for making you sound it's really yeah, feel it's, old. It's weird. It was the same. I I first played it on the Sonic Mega Collection as well, hmm. but um, I was uh, like I was around during the like I was around during the SNES era. That was that was when I first entered gaming. Right. But hmm. I wasn't allowed to get a game console. I was only allowed a Game Boy. I've, I've got given my Game Boy Advance for free with a couple of games that were from America. That, I, was, I, like my first, <laughs> that was my first handheld. I think I did this too fast. I, I tried launching Tails at the button, but it didn't work. <laughs> damn, damn it, Tails! <laughs> <laughs> What is this? <laughs> this is the most beautiful thing to watch up right now because I'm, I'm watching it on the same leg as all the viewers and oh my gosh. Has, has Tails done the thing yet? Is this? I, can, can... <laughs> uh, I think Tails is balancing? Yes. Tails is standing on top of the animal capsule. <laughs> Mocking the fact that I that I can't break it open. It's like looks like Team Tails is blasting off again. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're, we're, we'll have to manually go to Carnival Night. Local fox ruins everything. <laughs> I like that. If you uh, have it set to Sonic alone, can uh, Pad Two still control Tails in a uh, in this boss? I don't know. I probably knew at one time, but it's been a long time since I've done anything like that. Probably, but um, for some reason, in my cartridge version of Sonic 3, when whenever whenever I don't play as Tails, um, Tails will some for, for some reason just just stand at the at, um, the end of the end of um, like the start of Carnival Night, and he'll just stand there and just look. And then when I when I beat the boss, he for some reason comes back down as if. You know, should Tails should be there when he shouldn't when it's Sonic alone. Yeah, I've had that happen to me before as well. I think I think that's just a wee glitch. Yeah, that, that glitch happens the... a lot. I thought it was fixed in Sonic 3 Complete. I, I may not be using the newest version, or I may have triggered an entirely different glitch doing that. <laughs> I think it's related oh, no, to... It's, if, that like, was just it. Like, if you make it through the, uh, the section with the earthquake and the moving ground too quickly, I think that's what causes it. If I'm rem if I'm remembering correctly, it could be actually because I because I always remember getting through that and then having the whole screen rumble for ages. Also, you are utterly demolishing this zone. Uh, yes. <laughs> Carnival Night is really easy with hypersonic. Yep. That's that's why that's why you always go with hypersonic slash supersonic in these in this stage if you've got the Key of Emeralds, which you should have by this point. <laughs> My, I did this. I did a live stream of. Um, I'm gonna boast here because uh -huh. fuck you. That's why. <laughs> um, I, my, it, like I did a live stream of Sonic Three and Knuckles recently. I managed to get all Chaos Emeralds by Hydro City Act Two. Mm -hmm. Managed to get all Hyper Emeralds by Mushroom Hill Zone Act Two. Nice. Yeah, I can't even do that yeah, on the uh, Super Emeralds. The only way to play. For me, I got I got all the Chaos Emeralds by Hydro City Act One in my in my playthrough. That I did them on my channel, and and it was and because I'd, I'd missed like one in it, Mushroom Hill Act Two, I had to get the last the, the last one in Flying Battery Act One. By the way, I, I have to get all of the uh, Chaos Emeralds by Hydro City Act Two, and all of the Super Emeralds by Mushroom Hill Act Two, because I have found that if I don't. Then I don't know where they are. Those are the only places where I have, or the only zones where I have all the uh, the big ring locations memorized. I'll be honest. I, I really need to work on that then, because um, I'm fine. Like like you said, I can always get all the chaos emeralds by Hydro City too. 
But when it comes to the Super Emeralds, like, I, for whatever reason, I never got those down nearly as well. So I'm, I often don't even get them all until, like, uh, Lava Reef. Yeah, I like to be honest, I find myself playing the Sonic and Knuckles section of this game. Like, I don't dislike it. I, like at all. I don't think it's any better or worse, but I often find myself playing the Sonic 3 section a lot more for some reason. Yeah. Because it's first. Well Probably, yeah. I don't know. It was <laughs> I remember I, I had one of those old strategy guides on this game, and it pointed out something kind yeah. of funny, and that's that like all of the Sonic 3 stages, except for Marble Garden, have water. And none of the Sonic & Knuckles stages have water. Yeah. So that's kind of weird. Yeah. I'm not sure how relevant that, that actually is. Marble Garden has oil, but that's a bit it. Like, I remember it specifically saying, if there were any water stages in, Son in Sonic & Knuckles, the bubble shield would let you breathe under there. But, but there aren't. <laughs> I was like, why, why, why would you point that out? <laughs> Uh, Definitive Dub says Carnival Night is one of my favorite levels, and yeah, it definitely is for me, too. I mean, if it was if it wasn't for the barrel, I would like I would I would like this level a lot more. Uh, Frederick yeah, asks, what mean. zone comes after this? Flying battery or ice cap? And the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> maybe maybe flying battery or maybe ice cap. We don't we don't know yet. <laughs> You know, the thing about that barrel is that even after you know how to use it, it just brings the stage to a dead stop for a few seconds. I swear I think it was just put there to, to sell, like, going to the Sega Tips hotline for like $1.69 a minute. Because that's how I found out about it. That, that is how I finally found out about it. And I remember it was one of the first options they said. Like, I thought it was so cool because the Emerald Hill Zone music was playing while this guy, this over, yeah. this overly hyper 90s dude was talking like, Sonic 3 is the coolest, raddest game on the planet! To find out how to pass the Carnival Night Barrel, press 1! <laughs> <laughs> Oddly specific, isn't it? <laughs> so I'm sure they got a lot of calls about that. You have no chance, you have no chance. So you do have Flying Battery next. I do have Flying Battery next, yes. And I say that before it even showed the thing. <laughs> How did because you know that? I can hear your game. Oh, you can hear it? Man, am I drunk or is what's going on here? You're gonna have to be more specific than that. Oh, so I, I see. Uh, the, why, 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 why is Flying Battery? <laughs> It's because it's because of how, how the level layout was supposed to be, as you see in the level select for Sonic 3, it said it said, it said um, Carnival Day, Flying Battery, then Ice Cap. Yeah, Flying Flying Battery was even... at one time supposed to come between uh, Carnival Night and Ice Cap, and so ah. Sonic, didn't, Sonic didn't have, which have... definitely it makes sense when you consider how hard this level is compared to its position in Sonic and Knuckles. That's true. Yeah. I never thought of that, but that's definitely true. Um, <clears throat> so one of the options Sonic 3 Completes give, gives you is uh, the ability to position it differently. And that's also why, by the way, it was nighttime. Like, it's nighttime when I go outside here. Because that that's meant to fit with the, uh, the day progression in Sonic 3. I'm fascinated by all this new learning. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Tell me again how pig's bladders can be used to prevent earthquakes. Okay. Very carefully. <laughs> again, I, I forgot to go hypersonic until this then. Oh, we've got a heathen here. We've got It's a Me Mario. That's not right. It's a Me Mario. Yahoo! Okie dokie. <laughs> Uh, I've, been too, I've been playing too much Mario and Luigi lately. I've been I've been recording some of some for my Let's Play of Superstar Saga, and I'm and I'm also playing through Dream Team. Are you excited for uh, Paper Jam? Yes, I am because I'm both a Paper Mario fan and a Mario and Luigi fan. I don't know if I'm still a Paper Mario fan anymore after two crap games in a row. I would be more I like, excited. I, like... I would be more excited if uh, if Gino was coming back. 
Yeah, but then they'd have to give then they'd have to give credit to credit to Square Enix yeah, again. Yeah, I, I, I know the problems it. with it. <laughs> Nick points out that this, I love stuff. You know, for making a cameo appearance in a mini game in Superstar Saga, though. Yeah. Who did? But they had to give credit to Square Enix. I, I remember absolutely adoring the Thousand Year Door when I played it, but other than that, I'm not played many of the matches. I'm I do I do, I'm not very very into the Super Mario RPG, but I love the love the first and second Paper Mario game. Super Paper Mario was good, but I've not played that in quite a while because I had to give it back to my cousin. Until, and Sticker Star was just a big disappointment. Until very recently, I thought I was the only person whose favorite Paper Mario game was Super Paper Mario. I'm not saying it's the best, I understand why people don't like it, but <laughs> but it's my favorite. It yeah. frustrates me to no end. It, it feels like it just comes up with excuses to waste time. Oh, I don't disagree at all. It's just... <laughs> Turn-based battle mechanics will, al will almost always be inferior to me to, like, platforming, I guess. See, I liked the platforming, and I liked the way the battles worked. I just thought that... Everything else wasn't good. I didn't like the new characters. I didn't like the art style with all the square everything. I didn't like the level layouts. It, it was a good idea, but I thought it was badly executed. Was yeah, I remember people <laughs> people found out about it and they went freaking crazy for it. Like this is so amazing. This like you, you get to switch between two D and three D, and uh, I think they got I think they overhyped it a little bit. But, uh, I don't know. I, like, like I said, I really enjoyed it. I mean, the only good thing about Sticker Star is its music. <laughs> oh, Sticker Star had amazing music. I never played Sticker Star. That, that, that makes it a good idea to buy the soundtrack instead of the game. Chomp I ruins. Love, I loved its theme. <laughs> I love the... Uh, the only thing I know about Sticker Star, and the thing that I adore from it, is that it's got uh, the Star Maze from Super Mario Land 2 in it. Does yes. it? That's cool. Yes. It, w one of the power-ups is a boombox or something, and it, it, play, it starts playing the Star Maze theme. Yeah. What do you guys think of uh, of the original Super Mario RPG, in all seriousness? I adore that game. It's, I... it's, it's good, but I came out kind of, kind of late, like, when it came out on the Virtual Console, so... So I was used to Paper Mario by that point, and, it was, and when I went to it, I, was, I could get into it, but I just found it too hard. I'm, I, I, I'm kind of the opposite. Like, Mario RPG was the first RPG I ever played. Mm -hmm. So I was I was very confused about it. Like, what? Like, I tried to jump on a Goomba, and you go to this turn-based battle thing, and it's like, what is this? What is going on? But, uh... First that he was Pokemon. But I think, I think like, I... a little bit of the reason I never really got into any of the Paper Marios, aside from Super, is because I was like, mm -hmm. well, this is okay, but why can't it be more like Super Mario RPG? And I understand why it can't be, to be clear, but... <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I was always sort of mentally comparing it to that. I've actually never played Mario RPG. Also, is that the peelout? <laughs> is that what? <laughs> is that the peelout? I've only just noticed. Yes, this hack has the super peelout in it. Oh yeah, yeah. It, it's a little bit weird though. It's um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> in all honesty, Shay, I didn't. I. I was trying to figure out what you were saying until uh, <laughs> until Kovar said, "Yes, this hack has the super peel out in it." Um, but yeah, it's it's a little weird though because it shows the super peel out animation until you release it. And this, and yeah, you can see through the lightning shield there. Now it's not. But I assume that's something to do with Sonic 3's like sprites or something. I I'm very technically minded. What is, uh, what is Bow Down Ghost talking about? Why don't you put a banner for this site? Massive income for streamers. I assume it's a joke. I'm, uh, looking at it now. It is, uh... It's an ad. Okay. I can't tell what this thing is. It doesn't look like something that I would do personally. <laughs> yeah, it, it that, that... Inform others, watch your profit grow, receive your money. Yeah, that's probably Statistics accurate. And... Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't look. What? Like, bow down ghost, I could be wrong here, mate, but if, if you're a bot, if you're not a bot, say something. 
if you're not a bot, say something. <laughs> oh god, am I gonna have to start getting moderators? Yeah, it looks like one of those crappy revenue sharing programs. You remember sub for sub. <laughs> oh gosh. Yeah, See, I, I used I have to never think been that, kind of that if I I used to think that if I subbed to them, they would buy me a submarine sandwich, and they didn't. <laughs> I was very disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for those of you who haven't seen, um, if you haven't seen this section of Sonic Three Complete, check this out. If I'm, I, I, like Sonic Team did interviews years later and said that this was originally how it was supposed to go, and it's awesome mm -hmm. that uh, Tittles, who was the force, the driving force behind Sonic Three Complete, was able to recreate this. This is this is really neat. <laughs> I can hear the music that everybody likes. Yes. I can hear it. Oh, there he goes. Oh, it was paused, wasn't it? Yeah, it was paused. Okay. <laughs> ah, skiing on a door. Yes. <laughs> oh, that is exactly sweet. the same thing as uh, Sonic Adventure 2. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is actually. I finally got it because if for some reason my stream is behind. <laughs> probably because probably because Divinot, Divinot for some reason went to recover web page. Okay, I uh, I gotta get going. I have to be at church in about 15 minutes to set up for uh, tonight's music. Um, but I will be back around in about three hours. All right, no worries. Thanks for thanks for being on. Thanks oh, for having me. Yeah, I'll I'll probably. I mean, I, I think as, especially as much as you've <laughs> helped out with this, you've you've got an open spot on the on the Skype chat anytime you want. Thanks, man. And I really appreciate it. Uh, it, it, it everybody in the chat, if you don't mind, thank Kovar because he spent like most of yesterday helping me get everything set up and make sure everything was running well. You have my gratitude, good kind sir. Indeed. And my ass. <laughs> and my dreadful body odor. Alrighty, I'm out of here. <laughs> See you later, man. See ya. Goodbye. Ratch, rounder. You dopey dance boss, can't you do anything right? Yeah, the, uh, the proportion of Scots to not Scots on the Skype chat just uh, just got a little lopsided. Well, uh, if, there's any, if there's any help, I will probably need to go in about 15 minutes. <laughs> That's fine. I can, I, can, I can stay for, when, for whenever, whenever you need to kick me out. I was hoping to make it to the end of Sonic 3, but I think I'd be being irresponsible considering I'm about to be up at like 7 tomorrow. Oh god. <laughs> I will play as quick as I'm quickly as I can. Right, you got I'm 15 minutes to beat Sonic 3 and Knuckles, go. Uh, I'm sure you can do it. He's got hypersonic, so I'm sure you could do that. I can definitely get to the end of the Sonic 3 section. <laughs> Actually, just, you, if, if you want to stay until the end of the Sonic 3 section, that, that'd probably be a pretty good uh, stopping point. Just because there, there is another oh, yeah, pretty no. cool thing that uh, Sonic 3 Complete added right there. That works for me, mate, if you'll have me. Yeah, like, same as Kovar, as far as, I, as far as I'm concerned, you, you've you always got an open spot on the uh, Skype chat. Thanks very much, man. It's the same with you if I ever do streaming, which I don't know if everyone will, probably. <laughs> I, I'm going to say this, say this here, but um, I don't know if any of you are interested, but I started doing quite a while, like um, a month or two ago, I started doing... All the Ape Escape games, the UK versions of them, like on stream, one through to three. And if I could, and if I could have got it done, I would have done um, like Pumped and Primed, and then Million Monkeys because I own the Japanese version of those games. So if anybody wants to see that, whenever I do it, it's so probably next Saturday or something. I don't know. Yeah, hey, it's pretty interesting. Like I've like the the regional differences. Um, I recently picked up the Japanese version of Donkey Kong Country 2. Which is called Super yep. Donkey Kong Two, Super Donkey Kong and, like, and like there are tons of like changes that like you go on the you go online to like uh, the cutting room floor, wiki and mm -hmm. places like that. Like there's things I'm noticing that aren't that aren't uh, documented anywhere. 
Yeah, like, um, did, did you know you, you know how they say in this game that you can't see the, see the animation of the penguins going down, down the slope? You can in this game. Yeah. I've seen it, I've seen it happen twice. And if you guys don't mind, I... like, keeping an eye on the Skype chat for me. Just to remind, just in, in, in case anybody asks, like, questions or... <laughs> what? Oh, wait, we've got, um, we've got definitive dubs. Uh, I've been keeping kind of one eye on the on the Twitch chat. We've got definitive dubs asking free spot on Skype chat. Can I join? And same with Pokemonologist. Uh, we need to. Uh, okay, well, I I need to figure out some way to. Uh, <laughs> to oh yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to. Oh, it's okay. Yeah. I, I need to figure out some way to determine, like, because if you leave, as far as I'm concerned, I've got like one spot open then. Because I. I like having four people all, all in the chat at once was was a little too much. I feel like, so I, I think I think three is a good number. So uh, um, yeah, once Jay can... leaves, we'll find some way to figure out <laughs> who else can come on. You can do any mini mini more. I guess just make make your case now. <laughs> What interesting things um, will you bring <laughs> to the Skype chat? Definitive dubs and Pokemonologist, uh, I would ask you to both have, like, uh, a fight to death. No. But since this is the internet, um, have a rap beef. <laughs> That's a good we idea, Shay, actually. A... If, if you don't mind, if you <laughs> uh, Like, since this is your spot that, that one of them would be taking here, uh, may maybe you could come up with some sort of a competition. That, that is happening. It's a rap beef. The okay. You have to do the best rap diss that you can. <laughs> but it has to be PG-13. <laughs> <laughs> that's good. That's going to be a challenge. <laughs> yeah, Nick... See, all right, Shay, Nick is saying what I thought, Shay. Like, you, you kept saying that. I, I thought you were saying a rap beef. Oh, I see. No, sorry. A rap beef as in they have beef so they rap it out. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Nick said a rap beetle. Uh, Pokemon Man, just says, shall I, we set, shall we settle it in Smash? Um, if you can get each other's friend codes and everything, I suppose that would be a more decisive way. Yeah, it might take a while though. <laughs> uh, Dustin VG Master says that his name is Dustin, and he's the master of VG, and he likes the Sonics. It's a compelling argument. Yeah, and then he's and now he's going to the DK rap again. Donkey Kong 64 was the game that I got with my N64. Uh, Matt Jenkins points out that he could be the dissenting voice of reason in this Sonic discussion. <laughs> <laughs> I will give the spot to who whomever does not like Sonic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, not be specific. And I just think without without conflict, this basically becomes like th this is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so so let's talk again about why Sonic Three and Knuckles is the greatest video game and perhaps the greatest work of art of all time. Let's uh, let's revisit that topic. I don't. I think there's more to discuss there. Yeah. Um, Sonic Three is good because you press the jump button and it goes blue. <laughs> Sonic 3 is the best best game because you've got Knuckles who is a dickhead. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> got Fuckles the kidnapper. <laughs> knock, knock, it's Fuckles. <laughs> I don't even know what we're talking about anymore. Well, Knuckles okay. is tougher than leather. Okay, I, here's, here it is. Pokemonologist and Definitive Dubs. In order to get this spot, you have to make the most compelling case for why Sonic 3 and Knuckles is the best game ever in one post. And I will let the Geek Critique be the judge. <laughs> and, and that's not just to those two guys, that's that's anybody. Oh yeah, okay, let's open the floor as it was. Yes, yeah, so whoever can give me the best reason why this is the best game. And, and, and you have one comment to do it. Pokemologist, I don't suppose you've been watching um, Who Dat by Digi Valentine, have you? 
Is that is that his reason? Because I don't I don't see the argument there. Oh no no no! That, that's just a <laughs> curiosity. No, I know, I know. A, a comedy. I know. Um, uh, no, I haven't. Um, you should. It's very good. Okay. I, I that, that that was basically it. Okay. By the way, I just remembered that several hours ago, somebody I, I saw in the chat, and I never answered. <laughs> somebody who I don't even know if they're still here asked if I'd been watching the Game Grumps playthrough of this game, and the answer is I watched I think like the first two episodes, and I haven't haven't kept up with it since then. Last thing I watched from Game Grumps was was, was James Bond Jr. And all that made me do is want is want is made me want to play James Bond. Oh, Robocod! What a great game that is. It's, yeah, I got really annoyed at the Grumps playthrough because it, it, it wasn't just, it just wasn't like, oh, I don't like Sonic 3 or I hate Sonic 3, which is fine. It's like, arrogance. It, like, like, it's almost like, you're stupid if you like this game. Haha, <laughs> look at this shit design. Gerard, what are you doing? Enjoying yourself. And I thought, I thought it got a bit unpleasant sometimes. Yeah. Uh, SKM. How JY says that to explain why Sonic 3 is the best, uh, he, he's just inserted the transcript from Shay's video. <laughs> that, that's cheating a little bit. I mean, I know you're taking Shay's spot, but you, you, you can't just take Shay's concept as well. Sonic 3 is the best game because unlike Sonic, it doesn't chuckle. <laughs> uh, that's, that's very compelling. The most compelling argument I've seen so far is from Retro64Z, who says, it has no Amy. <laughs> it has no Amy. Alright. <laughs> it could have had Amy, but it doesn't. Yeah, this, this is, this is, because this is the complete version, you get both bosses in this, in this, um, don't you? Yeah, yeah. So we get to hear the big arm music. Oh, I love this music. And here comes, uh, we're, we're about to hit the neat bit that, uh, complete ads. Sonic 3 is the best game ever because it introduced the iconic character Nipples the Enchilada. <laughs> <laughs> I am Nipples the Enchilada. Wow, it's quite hot out here. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Uh, Pokemon all just switches ahead of Metal Sonic. There is a hack where you play as Metal Sonic, actually. Sonic 3 is the best, because unlike Valve, Sega can count to 3. Alright, <laughs> here. This is... the neat bit. Hooray. The neat bit's over for me. I know you guys haven't seen it yet. Ah! Oh! Oh, that is cool. I really like that. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> uh, Hold on a minute. Mushroom Valley? Uh, yeah, that's, that's another Sonic 3-ism. Um, if you, if you nice. manage to input the Sonic 3 level select code, uh, you can see, <laughs> even though you can't Valley. select it, uh, there's a level in there called Mushroom Valley. Ah. Okay, Definitive Dub says, Sonic 3 NK was the game that proved that you can have a compelling story without the use of dialogue or even cutscenes. Every level connects to itself in a logical way, unlike Mario in previous games. It paved the way for games such as Half-Life. You're never taken out of the game. It's as long as it can be without being bloated. It has music composed by one of the greatest artists of all time, and it has some of the best visuals on the Genesis. That um, I'm removing points because it's the Mega Drive. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait a minute! You, you said I could. You said I could judge this. Are, are you are you pre-removing points from me? I, I no. <laughs> I, hoisted by my own petard. All right, all right. Uh, Definitive Dubs is the only person who's taken it seriously so far. So uh, yeah, I think that's a legit answer. Uh, Dog Jihad also, also has something. I think, I think the characters in this series are very of their time, and it does a good job to set itself apart from the competition with its speed and flashy colours. However, this game doesn't have the good Chemical Zone music. Uh, that's true, but I, I'm, I'm deducting points because you, you didn't call it Chemical Plant Zone. 
But I, 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 I'll, I'll agree with that. I think that generally, it, it's very close, but I, I do think that one of the only areas that Sonic 2 is better than Sonic 3, at least to me, is in the music department. But like yeah, I said, it's I, very, I very close. I, to be honest, I think Sonic 3 kind of blows Sonic 2 out of the water, as amazing as Sonic 2's soundtrack is. Really? Really? Yeah, but, but then I'm really biased towards this game. <laughs> it's just every sound effect in this game is really evocative to me. It's like, it's so distinct. Like, the thing is, is that I'll find a lot of, like... Well, no, it's, it, there's no criticism to be made about the Sonic 2 soundtrack. It's just I think this went above and beyond, personally. Right, right. Yeah, I'm, I'm not I'm not really even disagreeing with you. I'm just saying, like, I, I'm picturing myself in the situation where I can only listen to one soundtrack or the other for the rest of my life. Uh-huh. Although, although if, it, it, I guess if I was in that situation, I'd still go with Sonic 3 because more variety. Yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, I'd probably go with Sonic 3, but well, definitely go with Sonic 3 myself. I don't know, it's one of those things that depends on the game. I'd rather, I'd rather have Sonic CD soundtrack, the Japanese soundtrack, and some and some of the American soundtrack, like Tidal Tempest, I like that. Yeah, I was... I like the American... Go ahead. No, sorry, I was going to say, I like the American version of Tidal Tempest with the do-do-do... Like, the, the, the vocals in it. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> um... Somebody was... Oh, yeah, when I was doing that thing with uh, Ben Woodring a couple months ago... I was on a, uh, mm -hmm. his college radio... Oh, by the way, this cutscene is uh, is awesome. Anyway. Um, yeah. The subject of the radio show I was on was uh, Sonic vs. Mario in terms of music, only counting the 16-bit levels. Or only counting the 16-bit mm -hmm. games. And there were people oh. who called in and voted for Mario over Sonic given those parameters. And I was like, what are you doing? How can you, how can you possibly believe that? Like Super Mario, like what? Hang on, sixteen bit parameters? Yeah, only so, only counting the sixteen bit games. So you basically have Super Mario World versus the entire Mega Drive trilogy. Well, and Sonic. well, not not just that. You've got <laughs> Mario World Two, uh, Yoshi's Island. You've got Mario oh, RPG, yeah, Mario Kart. Yeah. Um, I mean, th there are more Mario games than just Mario World. That that is kind of something we struggled with at first, though. I mean, uh, I mean, I do like some Yoshi Island, like I, I really like Yoshi's Island soundtrack, but um, I still do like the Sonic Sonic soundtracks a bit better. Yeah, but uh, because I didn't, because I grew up with Sonic more than more than any Mario. I didn't even know know any Mario games until I was about until I, until I got my um, my DS. Oh yeah, I'm not saying that as like a criticism of the Mario soundtrack. It's it like Mario's always had good music. It's just like yeah. I think Sonic, particularly if all we're looking at is at a 16-bit, I think Sonic just blows it, like, <laughs> is, like, at least an order of magnitude better, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. And um, also, unfortunately, uh, Pokemologist has to go away for about an hour, so I think Definitive Dubs is our winner there. Uh, let's see, what, well, let me, let me scroll the chat up here for a second. Because, was he the one, yeah, Definitive Dubs was the one who gave a very good answer. Uh, Doc Jihad also gave a very good answer. Mm -hmm. uh, aside from the chemical plant zone thing, but... And, uh, one shot... Fi oh, Mario is missing. We did forget about that. <laughs> who could forget about Mario is missing? <laughs> like Hotel Mario, who could forget that game? Now I am tempted to let to let, just let Doc Jihad come on as well, <laughs> because but but I would be being biased because I know him in real life. But I don't know. Maybe I'll break my own rule and just have Doc Jihad because, like he said, it would be good to have somebody who doesn't think that these games are just the greatest of all time and will hear no arguments to the contrary. Um. Yeah, that seems fair to me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, it's, it's, got, it's gotten to midnight now and I'm absolutely shattered. It's alright. <laughs> um, anyway, I'd better clear off just now. Thanks very much for having me, and sorry for being very loud and obnoxious. No, dude, thank thank you so much for being here. This is this has been fantastic. And uh I, I'd love to do it again at some point. Like it Yeah. 
Well, I will... I'm probably not going to get done with this entire marathon just tonight, so I'll probably be, be back at this, at this again tomorrow. I, I'm not sure exactly when I'll cut it, but uh, if you'll be around tomorrow, uh, you're welcome to come back on. Um, I'll see what I'm at. I'm, in fact, I might be out tomorrow. Is the... Yeah. Um, but I'll see where I'm at, and if, if I'm around, I'll definitely try and see if I can come back on. The only thing I would ask is please don't put that Sonic R footage on YouTube. That's... <laughs> That's not going to go well for me. <laughs> um. <laughs> See, I was going to monetize it and make millions, and and share and split the pot with you, of course. But, but still. I I think there are more important things than money. There's like your dignity. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, um, I mean, we all sing except for Kovar. Yeah. But no, in all seriousness, if you, if you don't want me to put it on YouTube, I won't put it on YouTube. I, I have to be honest. I think it's a one-time thing. Okay. I'm go, I'm go, uh, like, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'd rather that wasn't recorded for posterity. <laughs> 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 no, but um, thank you all very, very much, and thank you all for the chat for being lovely, and um, th thank you God for giving me wings. <laughs> Well said, Shay. Oh, look, it's the boss. <laughs> look, it's the boss that Sonic the comic show showed you how to beat. Oh my God! Just when I'm leaving, we start talking about Sonic the comic. Sorry, I'm, I just had to say. I just had to say. I've not. I've only had. I've only so had, like, let's let's get into a discussion here as I as I finish up Sonic Three on the uh, on the storyline and the the characters of Sonic the comic. Uh, let, let, let's really analyze that. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know what? I'm, I'm I'm just going. I'm just going to. Uh, I don't know I've how got, you can get hit by it, yeah. I've got blooming old issues. If you if you um <laughs> There are certain issues with the online continuation of Sonic the Comic that I've written for, and I've written two stories about Big the Cat. <laughs> so that should give you some That should give you some uh, indication of how I feel about Big the Cat and Sonic the Comic. <laughs> Well, why, why isn't is it, isn't it... why is Big the Cat the best, most well-developed character uh, in the Sonic canon? Isn't... Well, I think it's because of his complexity. Right. Obviously. It's his motivations are extremely multifaceted. <laughs> like, for example, ch chasing the frog is, is a metaphor for drugs. Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> <clears throat> and uh, obviously there's an allegory for obesity there. You know, he, he he is an avatar of greed. And I, I am seriously going to I, I am seriously going to go to bed now. <laughs> I, I hope that Big the Cat is the subject of Spitball Part 3, by the way. Oh dear, I haven't given he it away, is, have I? He is it. Oh speaking of which Actually no, sorry, right, one last thing before we go to bed. How much did the the donations raise? Okay, during oh. let me let me see, let me pull this up and check it. Because while you've been here, I'm pretty sure we were at still at essentially zero. That is just counting the Patreon when you first got here. We got we went mm -hmm. from 166 to 204. And let me see if there's been any more while I've uh, been playing Sonic 3 here. <clears throat> uh, no, there have not been any more. So yeah, we're still at 204.70. We well, you'll have to wait until Spitball 3 to find out what Spitball 3 is about. Yeah, I know, because you, you, you said it, if, if, you, if we got 70 while you were here, <laughs> that you'd reveal it. Yeah. <laughs> still, though, that shouldn't be too long, hopefully. Yeah, still, though, I mean, I'm, I'm really looking forward to uh, Spitball Part 3. And if you guys haven't done it, <clears throat> if you guys haven't done so, then definitely, definitely check out Shay's series. Um, Shay says. But in particular, a particular interest to this audience might be the Sonic Spitball series. They, they're they're very long, but they're some of the absolute best, like, breakdowns and analysis of the Sonic series that I have ever seen. And that's not hyperbole. And I watch, like, every Sonic, like, critique that I come across. I watch them. Thank you. For, that's, that's really humbling, mate. Thank you. No problem, man. Right, okay. And with that, goodbye. Goodbye. You've got mail. Bye. <laughs> And you've got one less mail now. <laughs>
<laughs> See you later, Shay. Bye. Bye. It's a bit awkward, I feel like. So how about that Sandopolis soon? What's that? So how about that Sandopolis soon? Yep, still here. <laughs> this soon scared me as a kid. I, I'm probably not the only person who's, who's been scared by this soon. Yeah, I don't think you are. By the way, we'll, whoever I bring on, I'll bring them on after, uh, as soon as I get done with Sand Alpha Sack 2 here. Okay. <clears throat> but I mean, actually, if you, like, is Doc Keyhod still in here? Um, I'll just see. Mm -hmm. Cause he did it. He... Yes, he is. All right, cool. Cause he, he he did it. Like like it's not just the fact that like I know him in real life and I haven't talked to him in a long time, mm -hmm. but um. Also the fact that I mean he did sort of <laughs> he, he he did try. Although jokes would have worked too. Yeah. It, it, uh, that that narble or that nipples the enchilada thing, um, <laughs> was actually pretty high high up on the totem pole. I feel. Yes. Uh, Alien Run has arrived, and he says he got banned from Wee Dudes chat. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> Dustin VG Master says bye, Shay again. <laughs> <laughs> you can tell Josh really didn't want him to leave. No, of course not. I love that guy. <laughs> sure everybody wants them to stay. <laughs> that was like That's the longest the goodbye ever. All right, let's let's figure out who else we can get on the Skype chat. Yep. So I'm sure not not everybody wants to hear my luscious voice. <laughs> um, I mean, if 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 you want to hop off and yeah, you... <laughs> no, 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 I was I was only joking. I was only joking. Okay. I was... I'm not. I I, mean, I, can... I I don't really want to like kick you off completely or anything. No. <laughs> no, I can I can I can I can go for another another two or two or three hours if you if you need if you need me. You know, it's yeah, but it's I've, you know it's. Oh, I don't. I don't mind. I, mean, I don't mind I'm you sticking around. Okay, we. The, the, the Skype chat, like, it's gonna be. Let, let me see. It's gonna be definitive dubs for sure. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be, and then maybe either Doc Jihad. Well, maybe maybe both Doc Jihad and Dustin VG Master. I don't know. The the applications mm -hmm. are closed for now, but I'm sure later on tonight, as as people have to leave, we'll we'll keep start keep cycling people in. Yep. So, uh, let's see here. Okay, Dustin DG Master, Definitive Dubs, and Doc Jihad. Um, just send, like, type your Skype credentials in the chat, and I will add you. And now we gotta wait a little while while that happens. Yep. Um, did you see, did you see the art, the, the art that I that I posted about for your stream, which is posted on my Deviant Art. What's that? Um, I, I did some did some art like based on like all the PAL box art. So then, like there's classic Sonic, there's Robotnik there, there's like all that. Like just advertising your stream. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. If you want to post a link to it in the chat, that'd be great. I did quite a while ago, actually. So um, if anybody wants, if anybody wants to see that again, you know who didn't see it or is coming late, then. I'm just, Post it for you. Although, hold on a second, I've got a. Oh yeah, I see. <laughs> mm -hmm. What you sent me on Skype a little while ago. <clears throat> yeah. So I forgot a bit needy there. I was because I, I didn't realize you were doing it so early. That was, I thought it was a little later. That's what it, I just. Like, Thirty-four minutes into your stream, I just got on, just got onto the computer. God, Skype changes all the time. I'm trying to figure out how to add people. There we go. <clears throat> it's Kino says the, the, they keep hearing my Android device go off, and yeah, it's right next to the mic. <laughs> It's not coming up with anything. <clears throat> oh, 
Oh, Radio Bucks is calling in. <laughs> hmm. That's uh, Ben Woodring. Hello, Ben. Welcome to the Skype call. Hello, everyone. I'm here. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I guess since you called in, that's fine. I'm trying to figure out how to add people right now. Oh, would that kick everyone else out? Uh, no, uh, I just added you to the group chat. Uh, Lewis, I guess, Will? Did, I, is, that what, is that what we should call you? Yeah, it's fine. Oh. It doesn't matter, because... All right, and here's Doc Jihad. And oh, who else did I say? Dustin VG Master. Well, you gotta. <laughs> yeah, go go ahead and plug your your Sonic Shuffle petition again. That's perfectly fine. Only ninety eight signatures away. <clears throat> Guys, my petition, petition to make the Geek Critique play Sonic Shuffle from early on only needs 98 more signatures. <laughs> Let's do it, guys. I've already backed it. I'm sure everybody else will. <laughs> I, I don't know if because it'll work even if it does get 100 signatures, but it might. Because everybody really wants to see you you flood through Sonic Shuffle. I mean, you could play my you could play all three all, all three Mario Party games on the N64, but. Before you finish the one game of of M Sonic Shuffle, and um, Blaze Heat Nix four five three, okay. <sighs> and Alien Run, yeah, yeah, you'll, you, yeah you'll get a chance. All right. I feel left um, out. I'm like the only one here who doesn't have a cool accent. <laughs> wait, do I have a cool accent? Well, I'm the only one of, like, the other guests who doesn't have a cool accent. I see, I see. <laughs> Alright, let's see. I've only got the accent because I'm Scottish. Definitive Dub said he'd be fine if we did uh, Doc Jihad first, so just to keep things from getting, like, overly... from there being too many people on the call, we'll add uh, we'll add Doc Jihad and we'll add Dustin VG Master, and then Definitive Dubs, yeah, you've definitely got a spot later on. Because you, you you actually took the little contest that Shay set up seriously. <laughs> so that was nice. <laughs> so here we go with Matt Jenkins, or rather, Doc Jihad. I've just outed him. Okay, do we have more people now? Hello? Hello, Dustin VG Master? I heard him say hello. Same here. Can you, can you hear us? Yes. Yep. Excellent. <laughs> and oh look, it's a new microphone. Hello. Hello, Matt. Hello. Hi. All right. Does it sound all right? I think my other microphone has like a weird buzzing so sound. So I this is the first time I've used this one. You sound all right. Yeah, you sound fine. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good stuff as we now fall into one of my favorite levels uh, in the game. I do like Lava Reef. Love Lava Reef, especially Act 1. The music, music, music is really good as well. Not sure what my favorite is, to be honest. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones to pick from. I love Lava Reef because it's just so long, but like it doesn't feel long. It's like, oh, I'm already at the boss? Yeah, it's like, <laughs> I've been here for five minutes already. <laughs> yeah, that one's my favorite too. I really like the, the reef. I really like the music <laughs> and I really like the music and aesthetics of Carnival Night, but like, as, as it was mentioned before, it kind of drags on forever. Yeah, I, li I, I like how in the background background of this you can see the death egg slowly slowly um, coming out of the crevice that it, that, that it got, that it got um, stuck into. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a great effect. Yeah, that's another example of uh, of what you of what I think you were talking about, Dustin. Or rather, no, that's what Definitive Dub said. Sorry. <laughs> about the story aesthetics, I think. <laughs> I, I remember I think the last time this stream was going on, I had mentioned something about how in Flying Battery when the, uh, the, I don't know what to call it, like the first phase 
of the boss with like the laser that the platform isn't rising the uh flying battery is going down yeah. and it took me years to notice that yeah yeah you i had never noticed that before until you pointed it out I'm like oh that is what's happening isn't it i never knew that till now yeah <laughs> apparently a lot of people apparently a lot of people didn't i guess that wouldn't make a lot of sense yeah yeah i mean what else would, what else would be happening <laughs> I mean, I think what caused me to realize it is just because I was sitting there and thinking about what was going on. I'm like, wait, why is this happening? Uh, you guys, if you don't mind, it doesn't have to be, like, constant, but just do remember to keep an eye on the chat for me. Yeah. Since I can't really <laughs> look uh, at it too often. Quickly, he got through it quickly enough. Yeah, everyone's I'm, seeing how I'm cheap you are. There. <laughs> I almost want to do dramatic readings of all the comments. That'd be fun. Wacky workbench was fun. <laughs> Were they stuck on it? Nah, he got through it quickly enough. It's not, yeah, not the people, biggest evil. <laughs> yeah, people complain about it too much, but even I'll say it's the biggest pace breaker. Yeah. <laughs> I played a lot of Sonic, but never Sonic 3. The Game Grumps playthrough this month was the first time I've seen the game to completion. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I ain't reading. I ain't reading. Yeah. I wasn't reading that one. That's one of my favorites. I don't think well, you're. I, I don't think, think you're alone in that though. I think there's plenty of people who maybe came on board with like. Uh, I know there's a ton of people. There's like an entire generation of Sonic fans. Like their first game was Sonic Adventure 2: Battle on the GameCube. I think that might have actually been mine. Like, either that or Advance 2 or M Mega Collection. I really can't remember, but one of those three. Even, even though I I officially got my first Sonic games via plug-and-play Mega Drive game, my actual first Sonic game I played oh. was Sonic 1 on the Master System and Sonic 2 oh. on the Master System. Interesting. Uh, uh, you, do you mean to tell me there's multiple generations of Sonic fans? I mean, <laughs> like, I'm sorry, but... He just mentioned the plug and play. God, I I spent so long with the plug and play, but weirdly, I I didn't play much Sonic with it. it I Kid Chameleon was my thing when I was playing with that. Kid Chameleon was good, Chameleon. yeah. Uh, but yeah, there. Like there Chameleon. <laughs> somebody said, "Do you mean to tell me there are multiple generations of Sonic fans?" And yeah, yeah. Uh, that's cool. <laughs> I suppose there are. I mean, everybody's got that got that one game that they started with. Yeah, I think the thing is, is that like, so on the second-hand market, like you go to like flea markets and yard sales, you see Sonic One and Sonic Two everywhere because they came with the systems. The Sonic Three and Sonic and Knuckles, it's like there's not as many out there to grab. Yeah, Sonic Three is rare, and especially Sonic and Knuckles. I, uh, I like, I knew a guy uh, back in high school who, would like. In 1994, he'd gotten Sonic 3, and he loved it, and he'd played it, and he had no idea that there was a Sonic and & Knuckles. And I'm like, I was like, you're, you're, you're missing half the game here! Yeah, like, I was at the flea market and with my dad, and we, he, I was like, oh, it's just Sonic & Knuckles. He's like, oh, no, we don't want that. It's, it's just an attachment for another game. Which technically it is, but like he thought you had to have like a certain game to be able to use it. Yeah, yeah, it is, but it's not just that. Yeah, it, it yeah. can play by itself. Oh yeah, it's its own game. It's just that, like he thought it was like an like an add-on kind of deal. To be fair, Sonic and Knuckles is kind of it's kind of complicated, and I imagine it'd be hard to explain to someone who doesn't play a lot of video games, especially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, oh hey, it's this. It's this thing, it's half a game, and you attach it to the other game to get the full game. Except you don't have to do that, and, you know, just so on and so forth. It, it's DLC in 1994. <laughs> yeah, basically. You can buy Sonic and Knuckles from GameStop now for twelve ninety nine. Yeah, it's Sonic 3 Episode 2. It's a hell of a deal. I can't get... I can't <laughs> That's get really a good way of, way of looking at it. <laughs> yeah, I can't get excited about that whole GameStop mess, because they're only doing it online. And I could just go to Amazon, really, or anything. And I'm yeah, like... I... Yeah, I have my local stores around here. I'd like to support. Because, like, even my GameStop sold it here. I'm like, well, I have CGR Games here, which is a local place that has better selection. Yeah, pretty much the same same deal here. Is CGR Games, like, classic game room games? Is, is Mark there? It's... 
Uh, no, it's not related. It's class. It's it stands for Classic Games Revisited. Okay. Yeah, I thought it was for Classic Game Room myself too. And That's I the first thing I think of when I hear that acronym. Yeah, me too. But hey, it makes it easy to remember. Yeah. Yeah, we've we've had a lot of of uh, little shops like that over the years. Like <clears throat> uh, nowadays, the one around here is G Two K Games. But but I, I always appreciated that. I always I, I, like especially like when GameStop stopped carrying, stopped, decided they were going to stop carrying all retro games. I, I was really glad that those smaller establishments popped up to uh, sort of carry the torch. Yeah, but I mean, you got to sell those smartphones. No, if, they, if they don't do it, who's going to? <laughs> yeah, my my local game center. That's like it's like a it's like a little um, indie indie um, shop shop that is in the UK. They they for quite a while sell like old games. So that's where I got like my first Dreamcast game, which was Choo Choo Rocket for for ninety nine p. This boss, by the way, is is in in my opinion the most boring boss in the game. <laughs> yeah. This jump. isn't a fight. This is a, a jump. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, jump. it's a shame because the build up to it's awesome, but then you get there, it's like, well, I mean, it's just here goes so two in, minutes. I think the only problem so with it is it goes on too long. I think if it was eight hits instead of yeah, sixteen, like, it wouldn't be such a big. Are you deal. standing in that lava? I mean, is there any danger I, in this? Oh, okay, you hit a mine. Yeah, no, okay. I, 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 I could, I understand. I could stand it, it and tell them because I had the fire shield. I feel like the problem is that you're just, I don't know. Maybe you could say that a, a bunch of bosses, but you're not really varying much in what you're doing here and you're and like you said you're doing it for way too long it, it would be better if you could hit him directly i think yeah it's, it's just like you're performing the same exact action for a good few minutes it looks, it looks like they, they kind of rushed on this boss and just copy and pasted the first phase first phase for both for, like if it had if it counted them Two eight hits, you know, for sixteen. Then it was just they just copy and pasted both faces. And by the way, I see some people in the chat talking about Sonic and Knuckles collection, and that's a good that's a good point. Yeah. A, a lot of a lot of the uh, sort of younger Sonic fans also discovered the series with that. Yeah, was that, the, that was the thing for the PC, right? Yeah, it was Sonic yes. Three, Sonic and Knuckles, and Sonic Three and Knuckles all on uh, PC. And Blue Sphere. And Blue Sphere. Yeah, good point. <laughs> Yeah, I remember one of the weirdest things I saw in a store. Like when I was a kid, I loved two things that you had nothing in common. I loved Sonic. I loved Garfield, the comic book. <laughs> but I'm in the store one day. I see the Garfield and Sonic collection. I'm like, huh? That <laughs> like, even that. though I thought it was cool, I was like, how did they end up together? <laughs> uh, also, Jirachi so says the, that the hardest boss the in the game is coming up, and yeah, yeah, Knuckles is yes. Knuckles is a beast. <laughs> Oh god, I was I was stuck on this boss for so long. I, I, that's Force another you have to call the Sega Tips hotline for. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I think it was probably closed by the time that I played this game, but, you know, I still found some way to call it anyway, just because I needed help that badly. We're going to look at the anatomy of an echidna here. But one thing, like, oh, before, it's, before it's too far off the subject, I should mention for anyone that... The PC version of Sonic and Knuckles, like, or, you know, Sonic and Knuckles collection is pretty cool tone, if only for the MP3 mod. Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Nice. I, yeah. I've wasted so much time just putting random MP3s into it. <laughs> By the way, if you guys want to hear some of the uh, Sonic and Knuckles collection tracks, well, I, I guess you could look that up on the internet yourself. Or, or better yet... <laughs> The uh, the bonus goal for Sonic Three is if we gain twenty five dollars during Sonic Three, I'll play through the game through the entire game again, and I will continue marathoning like that as long as we get twenty five dollars during a, during the playthrough. Uh, but I'll change the options in the Sonic Three Complete here, and I'll change it to the uh, the Sonic and Knuckles collection tracks. So if that would be interesting, are you going to, if you would like to see that, are you going to, are you going to show off the the um, the unique animation with Knuckles where you, where you... Way tells Sonic to go on. Uh, I know you have to stand yeah. in a specific place and duck to get him to do that. Yeah, it's like okay. just right in front of him, you duck, and he should do it. That's well, that's what he did to me last time I played. Yeah, I'll give it a try. There's, I can swear there's something weird with that animation where he he moves a few pixels to the right every time he does it, and it 
I, I, I find it hard to describe. So if you if you do it, you it, unless you know what I'm talking about, you might need to see it then. Yeah. But I swear it, it moves like on the uh, every other frame or something. Well, it might have been fixed for Sonic Three Complete. I don't I don't know exactly. Oh what yeah, I, I forgot. I forgot. I forgot you were. Yeah, I forgot that's what we were doing here. Or it might not even be in. Oh, there it is. There it is. Okay, I got it. <laughs> it doesn't look like he's moving. So th so that that may have been fixed for complete. Yeah, it might have. But been. Yeah, that's the inexplicably hidden Knuckles animation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that, that that is pretty weird that that's in there and that that's how you get it to activate. Like, I don't know if they were worried that people would be like, but I have to stay with Knuckles and make sure he's okay. I, I, I certainly never thought that. Oh yeah, they, they definitely fixed it, because I feel like in the original version, whenever he sticks his hand up or something, he moves a couple pixels to the right, and it always bugged me. Like, it, it probably just... I got OCD, so that kind of thing <laughs> I notice. Yeah. So so maybe that just bugs me more than the average person, but I'm like, Ugh, it would have taken you five minutes to fix this. <laughs> well, you must love Sonic 1 GBA, then. Oh, boy. Uh, Where, like, you look up and Sonic game. shifts forward by, like, five pixels. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, God, I forgot about that. Uh, the Waffle Warrior asks, know, right? what was your first game? Uh, technically, I believe the first game I ever played... Might have been Tiger Handheld Electronics Golf. <laughs> uh, either, oh, mine was some, <laughs> either that or something on the Atari 5200, because my parents had one uh, before I was born, and I remember playing it when I was really, really little. Uh, the first game I actually owned and considered to be a game of mine was uh, Sonic 2. Although, I did get it on the exact same day as I got Aladdin for the Genesis. So, <laughs> either one of those two. So I remember playing the NES when I was two years old. Uh, my parents got me uh, a Sesame Street game with, uh, for some reason, somebody besides the count doing numbers. Uh, and then the original Ninja Turtles uh, for NES with with the water stage. Uh, but I played a whole lot of Mario, too. That was my jam. I, I was never a big Ninja Turtles kid. Um... Like, like by the time I got into, but by the time I, I think by the time I was old enough to get into like big like kid fads like that, the Power Rangers were just coming to their own. So that was my big thing when I was a kid. But inexplicably, I do have that uh, Ninja Turtles game for the NES, and I don't remember quite where it came from. <laughs> uh, it came from Hell. Ah, that, that's it. That's right. Yeah, my first game was technically technically. Shooting Gallery slash Sonic One on, on the on the Master System, but the first game I owned was Scooby doing the Cyber Chase for the PS One. Oh, that was a fun game. They made a game of that. <laughs> yes, I mean, and I it's mean, really not, fun. I mean, not that I'm surprised, but I didn't know that was a thing. Because I remember watching Scooby doing the Cyber Chase at least a good few times when I was little. There's actually a little fun fact about that movie. I think that was the first Scooby Doo movie to be available in high definition. Alien Run mentioned uh, Jill of the Jungle, and uh, <laughs> I remember I that game. That. Uh, Lazy Game Reviews did a review of it, and I, I, I recently mm -hmm. discovered him, him, and I've been watching through his stuff. I'm like, Jill of the Jungle, oh my god, I played this like 20 years ago. Is there an easy way to play that these days? Because I'd like to play that again. Is that in like one of those DOS archive um, internet sure things? You can run it on DOS box, yeah. It, yeah, it I'm might, sure it's somewhere. It might be freeware. Um, also, I, before we get too far ahead here, Definitive Dubs pointed out that the reason Knuckles like points is because Sonic ducking is the Japanese form of gratitude. Like Sonic is bowing. So that that makes sense. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Hmm. Interesting. And by the way, my first game was some bare, like, educational Sesame Street game. <laughs> well, I, was it the uh, Elmo's Number Journey for the N64? I remember. It was that, it was that and its counterpart. It's, both I of just, them, like, at the same time. Because I was like, go ahead. So, no, no, you go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I was in my attic just cleaning it out. And I found, like, one of the only one N64 game I still had in the house. I'm like, ooh, what could it be? Because I was upside down. <laughs> And I'm like, it's Elmo's number journey. I'm like, oh, come on. Why can't it be, you know, Miss Pac-Man or the Namco Museum or my 
freaking Tetris. Of all the games you would have managed to hang on to. Of all the games I hold on to. <laughs> if, if, it, if it's the game something, was that that was it the game where you played as Elmo and they went around like Sesame Street, like um, doing all these, like going into the houses and having like talking to Big Bird and Bart and Arnie and that it was because I had one like that on the PC. I just remember seeing that game at, at, at Blockbuster, at, in between like mm -hmm. like Piglet's Big Game and and <laughs> and yeah, Elmo's Fun with Numbers, and I was like, man, I might have played that when I was a kid, but I'm a man now. And then I rented Pokemon Stadium. <laughs> yeah, I just came from too many games. I had a couple of thoughts. One, I saw the um that Barney game, that classic game room review. The what game? Where they all went crazy. The uh, Barney hide and seek for the Genesis. <laughs> no, I did rent that game. Oh god. Yeah, and then I also had a thought. I saw a bunch of games with Blockbuster stickers on them, and I'm wondering, are these going to be valuable someday because of Blockbuster being gone? Like some sort of <laughs> historical artifact? Oh yeah, you used to rent games from, from the stores back in the day. <laughs> it's just going to be like the middle of this desert, <laughs> like hundreds of years from now, and somebody's going to dig up like this cartridge and. It's like the ancient tech save in Blockbuster was where they originally rented their game. The question is, what does Be Kind Please Rewind refer to? <laughs> yeah, actually, I have a Golden Axe 2, I think it is. I got it from the flea market, and I guess it came from one of those stores, and there was a Be Kind Please Rewind sticker on it. I'm like, how do you rewind a video game? <laughs> <laughs> and it's going to be like, and the save icons, what is that meant to represent? <laughs> I think the chat is debating if Sonic so is Japanese or American. Is, the less interesting answer is those stickers have the magnets for the security system on the other side, so they used them for everything. Wow, I never knew that. Okay. Yep. Huh. Oh, I mean, like the white strips? Yeah. Yeah, The, the I always I mean, thought it was funny because yeah, yeah. Be Kind, Please Rewind, like, they'd put that sticker on video game cartridges. I feel like it's when... Um, when well, you're obviously meant to like open it up and just sort of turn the circuit board around. <laughs> Something like that. I know when my family first got a DVD player, I told my mom to rewind the DVD and she, she freaked out. <laughs> yeah, Someone in the uh, chat room asking who's currently commentating. So uh, my name's Ben. I'm from Radio Bucks. I do a video game show. Right, right. I'm Josh. I, I, I don't know what I do. <laughs> Uh, I think he makes videos sometimes. Sometimes. He tries. My name is Kaylin Miller. I oh, no! play video games on the internet. Wait, what? What? <laughs> I thought you died in a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> that is not Kaylin Miller. Don't get excited. Kaylin is dead. No, you missed uh, my name is Matt. Sometimes I play Kaylin. Castlevania on Twitch. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dustin BG Master. I am a novice programmer who has yet to do anything of any considerable worth. <laughs> no worries. My name is Lewis, or as some people, on, if they knew what my YouTube channel was, paid my TTYD fan one. Long name, I know. Um, I play video games, and I am, and I want to start reviews at some point. I don't know when. I might want to start with Banjo Kazooie because I recorded that game right after playing it the first time. Yeah. By the way, not that anybody's asking, but I know earlier we were talking about, hey, Josh, are you ever going to do a TGC on this game and this game? I will be doing something on Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> For sure. Yeah. And then, um, fun fun fact, I got Banjo-Tooie for £10, boxed, with manual and everything. Wow. W when did you do this, That's... out of curiosity? Um, it was... It was, it was only a couple of weeks ago, um, with one of my friends. Oh, man. And I got one with Skype. <laughs> They didn't. They didn't want the game anymore, and you know, so they would rather give it to somebody who appreciates the game, as they said. Yeah, that would be like twenty U.S. dollars, I believe, roughly. Yeah. I don't know. I thought I'd pay twenty for like just the cartridge alone. Yeah. And then I got, and then I got Paper Mario for ten pounds as well, box and manual, and Kirby sixty four for ten pounds, box the manual. Well, not too bad. Yeah, I, yeah, I just came from. Um, go ahead. I always brag because I got uh, Conquer's Bad Fur Day like brand new for twelve bucks, uh, but that was in two thousand two. So <laughs> that, that, that's like the perfect time to to buy the previous generation systems is about a year after they stop coming out because if you wait too long, they become rare collector's items. 
Yeah, I just came from um, the Too Many Games Expo here in um, PA. Mm -hmm. Dude, and by any chance, you pick up too many games. <laughs> I spend a lot more than I should have, but I got good deals. I know like the general value of everything, and I, so I knew what to compare it to and rarity and all that stuff. So I got a see-through green N64, which like retails for like $100 for like 60 bucks. Isn't that the one that was in the DK64 bundle? It could have been. I think it was. Then I got Mario Kart Double Dash for thirty bucks in the case and everything, and that's normally like sixty bucks in the store because it's so desirable. Really, I did not know that game it, was that rare. It's it's crazy how some GameCube games are getting now. It makes me glad to have a copy of Melee sitting in good condition. Oh, lucky! Yeah, yeah same here. <laughs> um, that's the one I, I saw a copy of Double cheap. Dash at the store the other day for like twelve like, bucks, and I. I was too cranky about that, but maybe I should go back and get it. Then. Yeah, if it's, the, like, if it's that should, much. Like, I should mention that due to, like, circumstances years ago, I actually owned two copies of Paper Mario The Thousand Year Door, and I was like, yes, <laughs> I, I have prepared for this moment. <laughs> well, that, yeah, I think it's funny how, um, oh, crap, what was it? I just had a brain fart. Oh, yeah, how... If you go out right now to use game shops and whatnot, and you buy Smash 4, Smash Melee, and Smash Brawl, it averages out to be 60 bucks a game, because Smash Brawl is only, like, going for 30 bucks right now, where Melee can go up to $90 retail. It's insane. Yeah, and the thing is, Damn. I feel like Melee, like, th this was kind of weird. I went to a, uh, like, one of those little shops, like we were talking about earlier, uh, in, like, the Knoxville, Tennessee Mall, and they had... Got like something like eight copies of Melee sitting there, and they were all like eighty bucks. Yeah, that does, that kind of sends out mixed messages, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. I think it's. Yeah, I understand that if they can get it, why not? But I think that's a little too much. Yeah, it's, just it's not like... that rare of a game. It's just we're taking advantage of the fact that it's a popular game. But hey, people buy it though. I mean, why not, right? Definitive Dubs is asking, uh, is Thousand Year Door rare? I think not, like, that rare, but I think it's sort of like the GameCube was definitely losing to the PS2 when it was around, and it's starting to show. Yeah. Um, for some, uh, um, in the UK, Fire Emblem Path of Radiance goes for £100. That's, that's, because, I mean, although it wasn't, although Fire Emblem games, that, even when they were just getting released, to the West, even though there was lim limited limited stock of them, you know, you would you'd think it'd just be still about 30 like Paper Mario it is. So that's the like, amount of thousand euros, only 30 quid here. By the way, I was just not using Hypersonic against the Death Egg boss there, just because. Just because I can do it. It's not fun. <laughs> A valid reason. Nice showing off yeah. over here. Yep. <laughs> yeah, someone just uh, wrote in the chat room that Melee has copies that advertise Wii compatibility. I mean, so I, th I think that might have been, I mean, I'm just taking a shot in the dark. It could be that, that they were still selling copies of Melee when the Wii came out. And they just put that on there to be like, hey, yeah, GameCube games work I think work I remember that. I think it's that's just a I sticker, think though. That is. I think it's just a sticker, Yeah, that's though. probably what it is. I mean, that's probably the equivalent of, like, the Greatest Hits collection or, yeah. like, Player's mm -hmm. Choice or whatever. It's probably yeah. something like that, which I think typically people don't like that stuff. But mm -hmm. I could be wrong. Regardless, Melee is rare, and it's easy to see why Melee is rare. Uh, most people who have it are going to hold on to their copies, generally. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm just kind of glad, because I was a... Let's just say, when I was a little kid, I was basically... Well, I still am, but not as much. But I was a huge Nintendo fanboy, basically. And, uh... I just... The GameCube... I My first console was a 64, but the GameCube was my jam throughout most of childhood. So... I kind of have this stockpile of GameCube stuff, which I'm really glad about now. That's funny because it, it was it was like I always associate the GameCube with uh, high school, actually, because I, I have like 30 or 40 GameCube games. Because it was like for a couple of years, like all through high school, basically, it was it was my console. <laughs> at one time, you could, at one hey, time you could play pretty much every Sonic game on the GameCube. Alien Run says, Nintendo fanboy suck. Love you too, man. What's that? Alien Run said, Nintendo fanboy suck. I said, love you too, man. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because, like, 
I'm probably more of a Nintendo fan, uh, if you want to say a fanboy, I'm probably more of a Nintendo fanboy nowadays than I ever was in the past. I mean, I'm I mean, definitely you're gonna have the Sega fanboys in here in a Sega stream. Of course. <laughs> I mean, I, I love Nintendo to death, but I'm willing to realize that they make a lot of really weird decisions. Oh, I'm not <laughs> I'm not arguing that point in the slightest. Yeah. I don't know what you're talking about. I got my Vitality Sensor pre-ordered. I cannot <laughs> wait. I, that, I don't even know what that was about, because didn't they just cancel it? Uh, it is officially shelved. Like, it just, it never came out. They announced, they talked about it like one time and then never again. <laughs> It is shelved, and it will happen when you least expect it. Well, I, I think they yeah, had problems just... finding actual practical applications for it from a from like a game mechanics standpoint. I mean, that just kind of makes it okay. I remember somebody mentioning that it was even more obscure, but something like that existed for the Nintendo 64, I think. And like exactly one game used it. But they it used it in kind of a cool way. I think it was some kind of Tetris. Yeah, thing. I know what you're talking about. Like it's a Tetris that yeah. speeds up as your heart rate increases. So the more nervous yeah. you get, the harder the game becomes. Mm. Yeah, that was that was actually pretty neat. And I imagine that a vitality sensor could have a lot of interesting applications in a horror game. Did that <laughs> Kojima game with the solar panels on like a handheld? Did that ever happen, or was that just like a crazy Kojima idea? No, that did come Nobody out. knows what I'm talking about. Great. Okay. No, no, that did come out. Sorry, I was on the other side of the room turning my okay. air conditioner okay. off. That was uh, that was Botkai, I think is how it's pronounced. Ah, that's right. Yeah, yeah the the solar power Game Boy Advance game. It seems in the chat, um, Jack T H is is also a hyperdimension Neptunia fan, and I approve. Is also a what now? Have you have you don't never ask, heard of the ask. series Hyperdimension Neptunia? Uh huh. I don't think so. Anthropomorphic well, video game consoles. Yes. And the main character is Neptune, who is based on the Sega Neptune console that never came out. And uh, apparently Sega is still going going against Sony, Microsoft, and Nintendo in that universe. <laughs> you know, not at all biased. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> I love the Hyperdimension Neptunia games. Uh, Alien Run is upset that I'm playing complete. <laughs> I don't really know why. Apparently... Apparently, I don't see me, what the problem is. apparently, me mentioning that I am something of a Nintendo fanboy has sparked heat in the chat. Mm. <laughs> yeah, like, there's. I, I think you can be a fan of something without being blind to its, uh, to, to its problems. Mm -hmm. Like, I think when people. I think people generally use the term fanboy, like, derisively to mean like okay you're a Nintendo oh. fanboy meaning you think the vitality oh. sensor is a good idea you 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 think oh. that the Wii like, like naming the console the Wii U that was the right move and stuff like that okay well alien run at least was he says he's just kidding, okay, okay. so all right <laughs> no, I mean, go ahead my, my main my main thing though is that one thing that nobody should really confuse about me is that i think i'm just really forgiving when it comes to games in general like i mm -hmm. Like, there's a lot of, like, things. Like, I'll watch videos talk about, like, why this is the worst thing ever. And I'll be like, I I agree with you, but at the same time, I still like this game. So I'm I'm just real forgiving about stuff I feel. And that was my Android device, by the way, for anybody listening. Um, I don't know. I think people sort of associate it with that archetype of, like, Okay, this is... I don't know if I even want to bring this up because it's going to open up a whole other can of worms. But why not? Let's do it. Like, Bronies yeah, got a really, really bad oh, name. God. Knew it. Knew, <laughs> knew it was coming. <laughs> and part of it is because people who liked the show, I think, would be very pushy about it. And they'd be very loud about it. And for a lot of them, well, they were far too much like, what, you don't watch this? You should watch this. What's wrong with you if you don't watch this? And I, that that, you know that wasn't they, good at all. <laughs> you know what they say, a few bad apples spoil the whole bunch. There's a, like a whole bunch of uh, reasonable people who are totally fine with you not liking it, but they get drowned out by the noisier folks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've, I, also, I myself have personally watched like the first two episodes of My Little Pony and not and didn't like it. You know, I just thought because it was a two part, I thought, right, I'll just watch the second part. That's me. Yeah. You know, I didn't like it. I've just kind of stayed away from the series after that. But some of the bronies, my God, 
like I was looking in, the, in like the like the YouTube the YouTube comment section. It was it was like listen, listening to little kids. It really was. Yeah. <laughs> At least Josh recognizes that the fan by bi- fan base is just a bunch of worms in a can. <laughs> <laughs> Also, somebody said, Watch as the NX is called the new Wii U. I believe you mean the new Wii U 3D and Knuckles. <laughs> and Knuckles. I saw a, um, a Photoshop picture going around right before Smash 4 came out. It was showing all these ridiculous things on it. It oh, was I like... Know, I know exactly what you mean. Smash Bros. with Mountain Dew and Doritos and Knuckles. <laughs> Featuring Dante from The Devil May Cry. Yeah, it, it had everything on it. It was so freaking w- funny. Whenever somebody <laughs> adds and Knuckles to anything, I never don't laugh at that. That that gets me every time. Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> I, I I actually did one of those. It's not that good, but it's it's on my Twitter. I did uh, Mario and Luigi and Knuckles. Uh, by the way, Garner Newton, I think that's I think I'm pronouncing that right. Hang on, I wasn't looking. Yeah, Garner Newton uh, donated two thirty two dollars and thirty cents via PayPal. Thank you very much. Yay. I hear the applause. Good. And Good. Uh, also. This is locked up, I think, but that's okay. We were done with it anyway. All I can think of now is Sonic 3CD and Knuckles and Knuckles. <laughs> Let's see, so plus 230 is going to bring us to uh, 207. Exactly, like, that's good. I feel like N Knuckles is always funnier. Like, it's always proportional to how long the title already is. <laughs> I agree with that. <laughs> like, 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 Pac- like Pac-Man Championship Edition DX Plus and Knuckles. <laughs> but if you really want to go for something that not a lot of people do, you go s- say that title one more time, if you don't mind. Uh, Pac-Man Championship Edition DX Plus and Knuckles. Featuring Banjo-Kazooie. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot about featuring Banjo Kazooie. You got you got to do that. <laughs> Street Fighter EX Plus Alpha and Knuckles. That is oh yeah yeah fight, <laughs> fighting it. Pac Man Championship Edition DX Plus Fighting Edition uh, 3D and Knuckles. <laughs> Platinum Edition. <laughs> Platinum Edition featuring or- Dante from the Devil May Cry series. <laughs> All right, I'm going to take a <laughs> Sonic Scratch and Sprint and Knuckles. All right, I'm going to take like a five-minute break here, and uh, then we'll get going on with uh, Sonic. I don't know. It could be. I could either do Sonic 4 next, or I could do Sonic Adventure next. I'm going to... Uh, maybe I'll make a straw poll about with, it. I'm fine with both of these options, really. Doesn't matter. Why don't you, why don't you play them at the I same love time? both of these games. Play, why play not both? with your hands, one with your feet. <laughs> Or just have one controller control both at the same time. <laughs> yeah, like like that one video. Like that Mega Man. No, I got video. it. You play the phone version of Sonic Four. We get the camera going. We point it at your phone. <laughs> or or you get like a DualShock Four controller and you map the right analog stick to the uh, Sonic Four. And you map the left one to Adventure. <laughs> okay, okay. The, the, the chat's going a little crazy. I've got a straw poll here. I'll check it when I get back. You know, honestly, I'd like to see someone attempt that. Uh, and if there's anybody in the chat who'd be willing to uh, give that a try and like post a video of it, I I would enjoy seeing that. <laughs> All right, so far we got three for four and two for adventure. So four people want to hear the ducks faster. One for Sonic Labyrinth. <laughs> oh man. And 3D Blast is in here. You know what's funny? I saw 3D Blast earlier too. I was thinking about buying it. I'm like, you know what? I will never play it. <laughs> you know, it's a shame BK Mies isn't here anymore because we're about to get to the ducks. <laughs> That's true. Uh, I like. I'm, I'm probably the, the only person, but I like Sonic Labyrinth. It's Kino has I, I made their own it... straw poll asking uh, what's next, and the, the options are Sonic Shuffle or Sonic Shuffle. <laughs> like, uh... I I actually like I'm not a huge fan of Sonic Labyrinth, but at the same time I, I don't think it's nearly as bad as anyone as, as anyone says. It's it, it just maybe it's, it's just okay for the idea. Game Gear, you know. Slow down, down shoes. Like, and I also don't think Sonic Blast is that terrible either. I mean, granted, it's probably one of the worst of the Game Gear games for sure, but I actually thought it was fun enough. Okay, so I'm, I'm Googling really quick because I've never heard of it. Sonic Shuffle is a party game? This it's, is a Mario party? So- oh, boy. I think it was actually made... Oh, yeah, it was actually made by the same people, I think. Yes, it was made by Hudson Soft. 
Hudson Soft. I think the general consensus is it's nowhere near as good as Mario Party. Uh, is Bomberman playable? That's putting it mildly that it's nowhere near as good as Mario Party. It's... <laughs> it's... It's another beast. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a lot like it, worse than Mario Party. I think I think it's just most people agree it's just kind of mechanically cluttered.